So it was several years ago when I worked in central office in the last school division that I had the opportunity to work in. And um, I had seen a lot of success in that school division, had done some uh, great stuff with great educators in that space. And I felt like I was just constantly go, 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 go. And it got to a point where I just, I just had nothing left. And I, I, I remember that very distinctly because I was really struggling and I see this happening with a lot of people right now. So I kind of wanted to talk about this, some things that I'm doing to that I've like set up boundaries for myself and some things that I really kind of rethink. Uh, obviously, you know, people know that I've had a big focus on uh, my own physical health, but really it's my mental health has actually been the bigger focus and they really connect with one another. And the reason I share this is because I basically had a breakdown and I take um, some time off. And what was really powerful was I was actually encouraged to take time off. I wasn't seen as a negative. It wasn't seen as um, something that would, you know, make me look bad. Because I had given so much to this district, I had given so much to the staff, to the students over that time, and I just, you know, I dealt with some, you know, things. My my, my father had passed away um, not too much earlier in there, and I just remember having this conversation with um, my deputy superintendent at the time, Kelly Wilkins, and I've talked to Kelly a million times. She's such an influence on me, and I just wish I could have the same impact that she has. And so when she talked to me. I said, I'm really struggling. She said, you, you need to take some time off. And so I, I just like, oh, that's not really my thing. I don't really take time off. And um, I just don't feel comfortable with that. She said, if you don't take time off now, it's you're going to be forced to take time off. And we don't know if you'll be able to come back. You need to, to kind of step away. And I'm so grateful that I had someone in a position of authority uh, encourage me to do this. And I did and I took some time off and it took me a while. And then it got to a point where I started feeling better. I felt I was ready to come back, but then I got a nervousness about coming back, coming back to my school district. And uh, I eventually did and I was nervous about it and came back and Kelly was one of the first people to greet me. And about a week later, she asked me to do the opening keynote for the school district day. And what was really I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed that she'd asked me this and she put me in a position where she knew I could be successful. It's something that I love doing, but I kind of thought I'd come back and I would look, be, you know, looked upon in a negative way. And she said, you know, you speak all over the world. Why would we not tap into someone in our own buildings that works with our staff that can actually be there over and over again? You know, it's not like you just come in that one day and then never see people again. There's an accountability when we have someone from our own school district doing this. And so I was really pumped and I wanted just to do an amazing job. And I, I remember having that day and it, was, it still sticks with me how powerful it was, but it was really, there's a couple of things that are really important there um, that I embraced the opportunity to kind of catch my breath, but I was encouraged to do so. And I think it's something that I want to talk about um, and I'm going to share a little bit more kind of some of my thoughts uh, some of the thinking that I have in today's episode, which will be the last one I record um, for the 2021 uh, season two of the Innovators Mindset podcast. Hey, everyone, thanks for so much for being here today. And, you know, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, I wanted to kind of talk about kind of some of this. Um, connection between our own personal well-being and then, you know, having people that support us in this process, because I don't think it's an either or it's an and we need both of these things. And it's something I've been advocating for quite a while. And that I wanted to share that story with Kelly right at the beginning, because I think a lot of times um, we will go to a point where we're so overwhelmed and then we're not really helpful to other people. We're not really helpful in the way that we can actually connect. And so um, part of the reason I wanted to share this podcast today is because I am going to take a little bit of a break from podcasting um, and sharing stuff um, from from blogging. I, I still write. And I think that's something, uh, even though I don't write publicly, I still kind of, I just kind of step away from the internet. I kind of step away. And it's not, I never, I'm not the person that will take a hundred percent break. I just, I'm not like that. 
but I really want to kind of appreciate this time because I think a lot of times um, we're so overworked and we just kind of get in this funk and we just don't know. Um, we don't even know we're in it. Right. It's kind of like, are you, are you, um, <laughs> you know, are you, are you in a rut or, you know, is it just like a temporary space? So I kind of want to talk about uh, these aspects and I, 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 I'm going to share some articles that uh, a couple of things I've written and one from uh, Mandy Frolic, who does a lot of great stuff with um, uh, self-care uh, and focus. And I think she has some really good points. And I, I don't typically do podcasts like this, but maybe this is something I'm going to try next year. I'm going to kind of share and read some of the stuff um, that I have. And so, like I said, I don't think it's about um, we have to, you know, just focus on our own well-being we we do we need people in this in support space as well and uh, i actually remember writing this blog post um i think it was in 2019 or 2020 uh, i think this was actually in 2020 and there's a, a a quote from a sharon hoover phd from the national center for school mental health and she said we need to focus on our educator well-being in addition to the stress of, of trying to learn a whole new way of implementing education they are now even more in a position of taking on the secondary traumatic stress they're experiencing with their students. And when you kind of think about that and you hear that concept, right? I, I think one of the issues that we kind of deal with is um, we, this is like in all positions of education, we we tend to take on the stress of other people. We, we tend to take this on. And then through that process, we just totally forget about ourselves. I think that's that's a really important thing. And so we have to kind of put ourselves in the forefront to better help others. And I've, I've said this a million times, but there's one quote and it's not mine. And I don't know where I saw it, to be honest with you. I just don't like getting credit for stuff I didn't write. Um, and so I acknowledge that this is not mine, but I just kind of saw it in the meme. And it, it said, and it was something along the lines of this, and I'm paraphrasing. So I, I actually didn't have access to the quote, but I just remember it. it's just not my idea. And they said, we spend all this money and time developing and providing mental health initiatives in the workplace, yet we don't look at the things that we do in the workplace that may be contributing to the problems, you know, it, you know, in the, in the first place. And so uh, this is like, a think about this example. And this was like, a, basically a, something I wrote about, um, and this is, this is a blog post I wrote about re rethinking professional learning. And so when I actually first wrote this post, and I connected it, it was like, basically, we'll do these professional learning days. And then we will just ask people nonstop, um, we'll just just totally overwork them, just connect, you know, just do this. And we'll do session, 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 session. And then we'll say like, hey, we know we're overworked, so we're going to offer yoga at the end of the day, not maybe in even in the time frame of the professional learning day, but like 30 minutes after. It's so it's just like, how about just not how about just not like overwork us? How about that? Because I'd rather not have yoga. I'd rather just not feel overworked. And it's something I've been kind of talking about um, for a long time. And really, you know, like I said, we got to kind of focus on our, our own care, um, but also have this opportunity to, you know, understand that there has to be changes. Like we have to address the problems um, that are causing this in the first place. And this is why I want to share this article um, from Mandy uh, Frolic. Um, then, and, and it's, it's, she, she writes on her blog post and, um, these, these links will actually be in, um, will be in the description. So if you want to read these articles in full, cause I'm just going to actually talk about, um, some elements of this. Um, so just, I really highly encourage you to read Mandy's stuff on this. It's, it's awesome. And she writes this, this blog post called, um, the fight self care versus systemic change. And I like that how she addresses um, what self-care is. And I, I highlighted some of the points that I want to just kind of go over. And she says, before I begin, however, I want to address my definition of self-care as is different than the typical manicures and yoga. I always bring up yoga that pu people usually assume is being discussed. I define self-care as the ways you take care of yourself and improve your mood, your physical wellness and your mental state. And then she says, I believe there are four types of self-care, physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual. And as I kind of have talked about these, these um, concepts, these, you know, I don't think they're in, they're, they're disconnected. Right. And I can tell you from personal experience, sometimes I've actually, um, you know, when I've dealt with like significant weight gain, um, that's when I kind of seem most depressed. 
And then when <laughs> I've noticed that I've gained weight, it seems to make me more, it's just kind of a loop, right? It's just something that happens um, that I had and really kind of having that struggle. And it's, it's kind of hard to dig yourself out of that hole. And so I, I appreciate that Mandy makes those connections between um, the, the four things that she shares. But this is really why I wanted to share Mandy's uh, post. I thought this was like a really interesting thing because I've seen a lot of this too, as she kind of addresses about, you know, people talking about um, stop focusing on, you know, like self-care, we need systemic change. And I like what she, sh she shares um, about that. She said, self-care is also not the entire answer for what needs to be a complete systemic shift in the way that we expect people to work through really difficult times. There are a few concepts that fall under the same category. Telling people to build resilience, for example, but at the same time ignoring the needs for solutions to a difficult situation is not okay. Telling people who are overwhelmed and a capacity to change their mindset and things will be better is damaging. Asking people to take care of themselves without a systemic shift in the way that the organization operates is not the answer. Implying that self-care is a cure to mental health issues is detrimental. The ability for one to practice self-care should never be an excuse to ignore changes that need to be made to support humans who are doing incredibly hard emotional work. And it, it kind of goes back to what I was saying, you know, in that post in 2019 is that we can't just like overwork people and then offer yoga as kind of Mandy, um, you know, shares in, in that space as well. And really kind of think about what are some of the things that we're actually addressing in, in, in the first place? How are we actually making some of these connections um, to the work that we're actually doing? And and I think it's really kind of modeling this too, because if you put educators in a situation where um, they feel exhausted and overworked and stressed, I, I, I do believe that tends to go down on students. I, I don't, I'm not a doctor and I'm not giving any advice. I'm just talking, I'm, I'm sharing experiences and that's it. And you take away from it what you want. But I, I know that I, I feel anxiety can be passed down, right? And so when we feel that that stress um, that, that gets into our, our students and our classrooms. And um, really, that, that's a really important aspect that, you know, Mandy addresses. And, and I'll go on and read what Mandy shared. She said, in many arguments, uh, tweets, blog posts I've heard, uh, stop asking me to practice self-care, making changes instead. But self-care and sustain sustainable systemic changes are not opposites. Having one does not mean you can or cannot have the other. Instead, they need to exist together cohesively like a team self-care is something we can control we have the ability to make the decision every day whether we're going to make our well-being a priority and practice any type of self-care we have the option of finding 10 minutes here or there to take some deep breaths read a book research something interesting or stretch out our bodies we make that decision we have the amazing ability to make that decision and with intention we have the ability to find ways to support ourselves even if we believe nobody's going to do it for us we have the power and we can take the ownership of the way we take care of our physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional health every day. We have a wonderful control over this part of our lives. Um, this is, I, I really appreciate Mandy saying this. And I think it's, like I said, you know, we, we, we create situations. There, there are situations in our schools and our districts. And, and let's not pretend this is just an uh, education issue. This is so many organizations and so many fields um, of, of work that happen uh in the world today and i think that's one of the reasons i like mandy stuff is that it applies to so many aspects of you know just basically work and life but on the other hand this is really important it, you we can't wait for other people to make the change for us because if you're always counting on other people to make the change they have total control if you know sometimes and I, I remember actually i love listening to some stuff from will smith and basically he says, you know, even if you're wronged, putting, you know, by someone else, when you constantly blame that person and you blame that thing and you want them to fix it, now you actually have given them more power, right? And really he talks about this and I'm paraphrasing and I, I don't have access to this. I just, I'm talking off the top of my head, but he kind of talked about this is that basically when we, we give all the other, like we have to find the solutions ourselves too. And it's not like, and that Mandy says, it's not an either or, but I also can't just wait for this to happen. And Mandy kind of actually addresses this. And I, and I really like what she shares here. She had widespread systemic, systemic change. On the other hand, is something you cannot necessarily control. It definitely does happen in a day. It doesn't happen in a day, maybe not even every day. 
What you do have is influence over change in the system. You have the ability to be an advocate for change, to ask hard questions, to get people to change their minds and, and to offer solutions. You have the choice to fight the good fight and work towards these massive changes that will ultimately impact everyone in a positive way. Think legacy, friends. Guess what you need to do that? Energy. Guess how you get it? Self-care. The irony. And I, I really appreciate how Mandy shares that. And I think um, it's really powerful kind of just thinking about that connection and, and, and doing this. And one of the things that I've said before, and some people aren't, you know, to be honest, you're huge fans of when I say this, but I think it's it's important to address is that when when you kind of look at some of the things that, that happen in our world, um, understand that when we say the system like what it, the system is not this thing that just it's run by people it's always it's always run by people right people do these things right and i've seen people that um you know are superintendents complaining about you know the system i'm like you're the superintendent <laughs> like you're kind of the boss right it's just kind of thinking about that or you know, people in like really high up positions i'm like if anyone has the opportunity to change something it's it's you right and sometimes we just kind of pass the buck to over over to other people. And so I think kind of seeing that we are, you know, we can be the solution um, in this in this as well um, to do this. So I really appreciate Mandy sharing those things and, and making that connection. I think that's such a powerful concept. But what I am going to talk about is this this notion of like what are some of the things that we can do to improve our own well-being? Because as Mandy said, you, you you have to continuously advocate. And it's one of the things that I try to do in my work. You know, I work with different schools, different districts, and I really kind of challenge them on this. Like, hey, why can't we, can we give people more time to reflect, connect? You know, people are really overwhelmed and overworked. So having this, and I, I so appreciate so many school districts are like, yeah, that's actually like we never thought about it. Because sometimes we just do the things we've always done, not necessarily understanding the damage they do as opposed to maybe sometimes from the someone from the outside saying like why don't you do it this way because i see you know great things um from other places all the time and i'll say like hey this really helped i saw people connect i i, I felt that you know people when they walked out of that <laughs> professional learning day the way they had set it up people actually had more energy um than 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 what they did before and so you know as mandy says we got to make those connections and something i've been advocating for quite a while. But what I am going to talk about is just these four things that I wrote this post, just to kind of to help improve um, teacher well being. And like I said, uh, this, these are things that we can actually do. And I think um, this is this is kind of the, the connection here. But some things that, that have helped me, right. And the, the first one I share is that it is okay. Um, actually, I'm going to share this first, um, th this quote that I've highlighted first before I get to the strategies. Um, the first one I talked about, as I say, I've been thinking a lot about the inundation of ideas in my journey toward better mental health. Here's a question I've thought a lot about. Where do I put my primary source of energy and what gets the leftovers? When I refer to things as leftover, are those the things that should have received more energy? This quote from Jenny Anderson resonates. The things that make us happiest in life is other people. And yet other people are often the first things to fall off our list of priorities. So when I look back at my career from the beginning until today, I've shifted a lot of my focus on what fuels me and what depletes me of energy. So that that's something that I, I, I've always, and I, I, I'm not, I, like I would love to say like, I've got this all figured out and I you know do this perfectly, but then I'd be lying to you. I'm still struggling with this. I'm still trying to kind of to, to figure this stuff out for myself because I think a lot of times I'll be, you know, uh, in my office, I'll be working, I'll be making calls, you know, connections, doing professional learning. And then, you know, by the time I'm done with the day, my kids want to play and I just, I'm, I'm done. I have no energy. And so I've been trying to like find better times or and finding more energy at certain times of the day to um, spend with my kids because that's what, that's what brings me the most joy. And I love my work. I love what I do. And I think probably most of you, if you're listening to this podcast and you're an educator and you're spending your time listening to podcasts, you probably love education too right? You probably are not like, oh, I hate education, uh, but I'm going <laughs> to spend my own time listening to, you know, podcasts on education. It doesn't really make sense, right? But really thinking about sometimes the people that are closest to us get the worst time. And I, and let's be honest, because we take advantage, right? We sometimes do that because we know we can get away with it, right? Whereas if we were 
basically, you know, giving our job just 10%, we might lose it. But um, when we do that to our families, they're still our families, and they'll kind of just love us, whatever, hopefully, but sometimes it's just not always true. So um, you just kind of thinking about that, like thinking about this. So here are some of the things I talked about, really, just kind of thinking about um, uh, some things that, that, that connect with, I think it's uh, just kind of give you some of my own thoughts, even though I wrote this, you know, almost two years ago, I just want to kind of dive into it and just give you my off the top uh, of my head ideas. And the first one is okay to, uh, to enjoy things that take away from your job. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see my books in the back, but you can also see um, some basketball shoes. You can see uh, my record player uh, in front of me. What you can see is my guitar. And I think one of the things I've really tried to do better is just do things that I enjoy and find that piece. And uh, as as much as I appreciate, <laughs> this is going to sound bad, that you're listening to this podcast right now and you're probably in the field of education, I actually don't listen to education podcasts. Um, and maybe sometimes, like once, in a, very rarely do I do this. Um, but I listen to stuff on sports. I listen to stuff on, you know, um, just general life. And the reason I don't, it's not because I don't want to get better, but a lot of times I spend my days talking about this stuff. Then I write about this stuff, I have conversations with this stuff. And then I just want to get away from it. And I think a lot of times we are so immersed in our job. And I actually, this is the, this is the really kind of the neat thing. I think this makes me better in my job. Uh, especially when we're talking about connecting with kids. I, I know I spent, I spent a lot of time on TikTok, you know, watching stuff, memes, and I can, you know, throw some of that lingo to kids and kids are like, how do you know this old guy? And I just like, you know, connecting, knowing about the world, knowing what's understanding. And I think sometimes we feel if we're not totally immersed in the world of education, um, then we're maybe not doing our best. But I actually think that when we immerse ourselves, uh, in the rest of the world, we become better at learning and we become more relatable to our kids, right? So yeah, there's times where I like read stuff on education. I'll maybe listen to the occasional podcast, watch the occasional video, but I'm, I, I, I just want to like, I need, I need my time away. I think we all need this time away. It's one of the reasons why I do the podcast the way I do. I like talking about education, but I try to talk about other things. I, you know, when I interview people, I like talking to them about education, but I want to talk about, you know, some of their interests from when they were younger. And, um, that's another part of this too, right? Uh, so the second part I talk about is you will never be done. So quit acting like it's possible. Um, so think about it this way. When when will you be done learning? And we already know the answer, never, because there's no end to learning. So when you're in a field that actually focuses on learning, there is no end point. There is no end point. But sometimes we feel like, oh, if I just get this, 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 and well, guess what? Tomorrow, like we play educational whack-a-mole. You get all these things done, five things will pop up tomorrow, right? And so this is one I struggle with and uh, I try to get way better about because uh, I feel sometimes uh, I do so much work so I have less to do the next day. You know, I saw a TikTok actually on someone as a substitute teacher. You know, when you have a substitute teacher, uh, basically you have to do more work to prepare for a day off than if you were actually there, right? And so there is kind of that that stress there in, in the way that we actually connect. And so I think sometimes we just have to learn to walk away. This is such a ridiculous thing, but one of the things I've used really that's been helpful is uh, actually uh, snooze on Gmail. And so I'll, I'll just like snooze all my emails to like make my inbox seem empty and I can get back to those things later. I can get back to those emails another time. And so I think part of it too is that we have to understand that um, basically there is no done, right? We want to do great work, aim for that. Don't aim for finish because it's impossible. It will never happen. Just kind of have that as an understanding. So um, right here, uh, you can, if you're watching, I have my little list of things that I need to do and I have that. And it's like, here are my important things that I need to get done. Those things I like to cross off, but anything out that's not on that list, you know, sometimes can wait or it can be done when I have free time. Uh, the next one is number three is you don't have to try everything. <laughs> this is, this is like, can be a self change and a systemic change. The self change is I want to be a better educator, right? 
And so someone say, oh, I tried Voxer, I tried this thing, or here's this new cool tech, here's this new thing. We have so many technologies and so many people trying to get in those space where we can get in front of educators uh, and you know the latest and greatest. The problem is uh, there is an uh, influx of information. There will never be a stop to that. And so instead of trying to do everything, we need to do a few things well. That's my belief. I, I don't try to learn the newest technology. I could if I wanted to. I just don't because I want to do what I'm doing really, really well, right? And I think that's an issue that we um, do for ourselves, but we also, we kind of create that issue sometimes um, systemically. And here's what I mean by this. Think about the initiatives in your school or school district. Do you have three or 30, right? If I was asked 10 teachers in your staff, this is how you know. What are the three initiatives in your school district? At, at the end of talking to those 10 people, would I have a list of 30 things or three things? Because I should have a list of three things, but I'm guessing it'll be probably high 20s, you know, high or low 20s, right? And people, we kind of lose this focus. And so we always want to be on the cutting edge, doing the newest thing, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, look, we didn't even get good at the last thing. Could we just slow down? Could we focus on these things? And I remember as a principal, uh, this was something I did and not good. Um, I did the worst thing, right? We would do, uh, I wanted my staff to become better at technology. So every uh, meeting we'd say like, hey, here's 10 new things that, you know, I saw in tech and, you know, I would show them because I want them to have all the options in the world. And then the next month they'd go like, hey, here's 10 new things. And then we'd show them, all, and so like 20 things. And then next month, here's 10 new things, right? And and then by the end of that year, my staff was like, we hate technology. You're just like throwing stuff at us. So the next year, what we did to kind of solve this, and this is a systemic change. I'm the principal, so I have, you know, power over the system, right? As I said, look, we I, I'm sorry about kind of doing that process. What we're going to do this year is we're going to focus on these three things over the next three years, and we're going to do them really well. And you're going to know the person across the hallway is doing this um, as well. So that it's not just dependent on the tech person, but it's like everyone in the staff is using the same thing. If you would like to go outside of these boundaries, you're more than welcome to. But as a staff, we will focus on these three things. And that was my way of just saying, like, we need to kind of pull back and just get really good at these things, right? And so when I say that, sometimes we create this problem. Think about going to like a technology conference and which sessions are like typically the most full. It's the 100 tools in an hour session it's like the latest and greatest right and we want all the new stuff so we can be good on monday but what about tuesday right and i think we do we create that right because if a conference sees that that session is always packed that people are always going to get the hundred new things they're going to have that session over and over again and that's why a lot of people feel overwhelmed so just just understand focus less focus more on doing less well um than doing everything poorly and i think that that's something i've really tried to connect and so and then the last one i think is a really important one it's something i talk about all the time is find people that give you energy uh one of the reasons that i take this time away is because sometimes i can find that i can get quite negative when i connect too much online and see some of the stuff that i um see and connect and uh, i really want to spend that time with people who who make me better, not make me feel better, but make me better. When I say make me better, these are people that support me um, and push me, but have my back. And this is something I think is really important. When I got a comment just today and it was really uh, important to me. Uh, I shared a quote from Jill Sawyer and Jill said, you know, one of the things that's, you know, different, I'm paraphrasing is that you do everything you can to uplift voices. And I, I wanna be that person, right? And I also want to be the person who's uplifted. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be just because I think, you know, energy is reciprocated. And so when you're taking time, um, you know, do you do when you find, I think sometimes we can actually find places where we like to commiserate. We like to get upset, right? Like I've been in a point where I was in the staff room where I like to go and be mad, right? And did that make me better? Did that make me, no, right? And it actually got me more negative. And I think to me, one of the things is I, I look for people that address problems and find solutions to move forward. But sometimes I got in a situation where I just focused on the problems and just, you know, it's just a vicious cycle. And then you're looking for problems all the time. And so 
It's not that problems don't exist. It's that we have to find solutions to make them better. Are you surrounding yourself with the people that give you energy? When you enter, are you, a, I wrote this blog post years ago called, are you a fountain or a drain? When you, when you go into a room, do you lift people up? Do they feel more energized or do they feel the life sucked out of them? Right? So don't just point at other people. Are you that person yourself? And I have been that person. I have been the drain to other people. I know this and I really cognizantly think about how do I become that fountain, right? And especially, I, I know this sounds, especially when I think about connecting online. And the reason I say this is because my online footprint is a legacy I'm leaving to my kids. How do I connect with people in these spaces? Like my kids will be able to look that up as like, you know, kind of connecting in these spaces. So I just, I wanted to kind of share those strategies with you and just kind of like briefly going through them again. Uh, one is okay to take things away from your job. Um, to enjoy things that take away from your job, go enjoy outside of school, go enjoy the sporting event, the fine arts experience that will make you better at what you do. It will make you more well-rounded kids connect with people that are teachers, not teachers that just happen to be people. Right. Um, the second one is just understand there is no end point. Embrace that. Once you embrace that, then it's kind of freeing. Right. I think once I understand like, Hey, there is no done. I was just like kind of a weight off my shoulders. Um, the third one is just focus. Don't, don't try to do everything. Try to do fewer things better. That that's for me. Um, uh, I love kind of focusing on a few things. It just helps bring peace to me and helps me develop expertise in those areas. Right. And then the last one is find people that give you energy. Um, do you feel better when you're actually around people? Are you that person that kind of, you know, other people, uh, want to be around in the space? as well and so i just wanted to share those things with you and i wanted to connect that to mandy's article which again is linked um in the description because i think they're just really important aspects but as she says um if we want to if we want to make you know our systems better we have to also put ourselves in focus and i, I like i've said this a million times when we take better care of ourselves we we end up having more energy to take care of others and in you know those people are closest to us and maybe sometimes the people that aren't closest to us that we can better help that we we never actually see the impact so um i hope i hope that it helped you in some way i hope that um, you pick some things up like I, I always say this i'm not here to provide you solutions and stuff i'm just here to help you ideas you know your context better than i do um and and i think that ultimately at the end of the day you are the solution um, to many of the things that are happening in your life. And I feel like I am that for myself, but uh, just some of the strategies I've shared. But um, this is not going to be the last podcast of, of the year uh, because we got some highlight ones coming up that were connected. But I am just going to take a little break away from recording uh, and just kind of catching up and catching up on some things. I, I try to do this you know, at the end of every uh, calendar year because my, my busiest time just kind of happened. And I just want to be with my family, enjoy them. Uh, you know, time goes by really, really quick. I was looking at a video of Kalia and I from a podcast we did last year and just how much she's grown up in just a short amount of time. I just, it just blows my mind. And so, you know, time is fleeting. So um, I want to have the most energy to, um, to be fully present and enjoying as much as I can. So um, I hope this helped you. Uh, I look forward to sharing those those podcasts with some of the highlights from, you know, some of the best conversations I had this past year. And I hope that uh, you'll enjoy them. And I also hope you get, you know, exact, I don't want to say like the break you deserve. I want to say, get what you need because some people will just go and party. That's what they need. Good for you. Some people uh, have, you know, like the married with children vacation where we sit on the couch. I don't, I've always <laughs> laughed at that sitting on your couch. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you remember that TV show and that's the vacation to sit on your couch and no one talk to me. I don't, whatever you need to, to fill you up. I hope you get that. Um, but I hope you're well, thanks for listening. I hope you have a, a wonderful day.